Hey guys, I'm having a really weird interaction with Charlie here. She is hungry, and she's trying to get into Teddy's tank. You can see Teddy through there, you know, through the glass, because there's lots of plants in there that she wants to eat. So I went ahead and took one of the pothos leaves, and I fed it to her, and I hand fed her. And what was weird is when she was reaching through the glass, I could tell that she was hungry, because I put my hand right here, like this, and she started like trying to bite it and like lick it, but it wasn't like a malicious bite. It was more of a, I want to eat that bite. So I went ahead and hand fed her and she ate. And then I had the dubia roaches here and I have a theory, okay? Here's my theory. She gets down here, I think, when all the isopods are out, like at nighttime, like right here, eating something or whatever, right? And she eats them, okay? Because I've heard her. Oh, hi, Charlie. It's, uh, she thinks I have food. I've heard her down here making crunching sounds. And I'm like, hmm, I think she's eating the isopods that are coming out. Because isopods are really big, right? And she is a green iguana, and they, they're herbivorous. But they utilize what they can when they can, right? So I, I, I grabbed the doobie roach and I put it up to her. She looked at it a couple times and then she ate it. So then I did another one with some with some calcium powder. But I want to see to what extent <laughs> she'll interact with me here. Because she she the weirdest thing is that she always hates my hands. But I, through the glass, my hand was perfectly fine. So why is she alright with my hand here? I don't know. Because I, what I want is her to get on my hand, and Teddy is climbing. Oh, no. Okay, I gotta deal with Teddy. No, 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 Teddy. No, no, no. Gotta deal with Teddy. Okay, I really need to film things, like, more often. Because I just fed Ruby over here. And that was, like, a super cool interaction I had with my little tiny red-eared slider. And I'm pretty sure you guys would love that. But I didn't film that because, I don't know, when I'm having really cool interactions with my animals, I don't tend to film it. Which is, like, not good. So anyway, what happened was I broke off a piece of water lettuce. Because I just have plants in here and I feed them to the iguana sometimes. So since I didn't want to go wash off plants upstairs. And because I have to cut up the iguana food. That's why she's hungry. She didn't get fed today. So I got one of those. And then I, she was down here at the bottom because the door was open. She was just going to come on out. And I sat down and I put the leaf on my lap and then she crawled out on my lap and ate the leaf and then she was like well um there's no more food here I'm out <laughs> and then she crawled right back up so what I need to do is get her to like if I had time I need time okay because like if I had time to sit down and do that like every single day and get her to like crawl out on my hand to eat she totally would, and I noticed that she would, and then she would get used to me. Now, I don't think she needs to get used to me, which is why that's not a concern, really, that I just put food in there and she's fine. But she could definitely be a lot more used to me, and I think I could get her used to handling, but it's just that I don't do that, and that's kind of the issue there. So I can try to work on that more. But pretty much it's just that that is probably the step that I need to take to build more of a relationship than we have now. But that's very exciting and cool that I can do that at all. And I know that she is, in fact, very used to me because we're around each other all the time. I'm always in my room, but it's still kind of unfortunate that we still haven't bonded enough to get her really tame. But... She's pretty cool. <laughs> and she ate doobie roaches, which was the weirdest thing. And like I said, I kind of, like, that's all right, obviously. I wouldn't feed her something that she shouldn't eat. But it, I had that theory that she's been eating the isobods, and I think that she has been, which is pretty interesting. So it's weird that I can feed her the doobie roaches. And I would show you guys, because she'd probably eat another one, but that's not something, you know, that she should be eating all the time. And that's another thing. I feel like I've seen, I've found dubia roach, like, feast, like the, the, like a dead dubia roach in here before. Not a dead dubia roach. Like a, 
Like, I've found Doobie Rich parts in her poop before, at least the remaining that would be from her poop, and I think that that is because she probably ate one of the ones I added in and then defecated it out. So, that could be possible, but she can eat this. Again, I don't want to, like, your, your green iguana shouldn't be eating a ton of insects, but they can, and they will. So, I mean, if she wants to eat the isopods, I'll let her, you know, she can eat as many as she wants, but that doesn't mean I'm going to feed her a ton of doobie roaches now. She's still, they're, they're mainly herbivorous, and they are herbivorous, so she will be getting plants. But maybe every once in a, you know, two couple months, I'll feed her a doobie roach or two just for fun. One thing to always keep in mind when you're working with large lizards even though Charlie's like tiny for a green iguana, she's large to most people. Uh, they're very sharp. <laughs> so I'm not really bleeding here. We have some uh, some scratches just because she walked on me. So you can bet that if you hold an iguana and it walks on you, then you'll be bleeding. So if that's going to freak you out, I suggest wearing lots of clothes. Or something like that. It doesn't really phase me too much, but I do wear gloves because I, I don't like my hands being scratched up, but it's just a warning, so there's that. But otherwise, they're, they're quite fun. Okay, so as of filming this part, it is December 18th. I'm not entirely sure when it was in, earlier in the video, but December 18th is the day after I got Charlie three years ago. In other words, yesterday was the three year anniversary of getting Charlie, my green iguana. And it was kind of cool because yesterday I held her and I was, I was trying to hand feed her and then I started like scratching her and stuff and then I kind of just picked her up and my hands kind of scratched up. I don't know, it's really dry, so. It kind of bled a little bit. It wasn't a big deal. My hands were kind of dry, so it was pretty easy to scratch them up. But I don't wear the gloves, really, because generally I'm trying to get stuff off her, and I don't think she likes the gloves. So the gloves are when she, like, if she's walking around or something and she gets back behind an enclosure, then I can use the gloves to pull her out and then, like, kind of more manhandle her or something. If I know I'm going to be holding her and she's not going to like it, then I'll wear the gloves. But otherwise, I can kind of just, I can't just reach in and grab her. Uh, it takes time and focus and very slow movement to interact with her. But I can to some extent. And I think that's pretty cool. Again, why am I not filming this? I don't know. But whenever I come to do it, I just, I don't want to mess with, especially with her. I'm scared that she's like, she'll get annoyed by the camera or the phone. And I'm also worried like, I just can't move real fast, so it's hard to, like, mess with her and hold a camera or position a camera and do stuff like that, so, but I need to, so I will, and unfortunately, I don't have any other footage for this other than just, here's Charlie, she's trying to go to sleep, she's like, why the heck are you keeping me up, and it's, it's nighttime, so that's why the, um, well, the lights are on for other things, because I've been filming videos, but her light is not on, I don't plan to turn on, because it's, like, all the way up there to flip the switch so she's been doing well she eats really well and does everything well and as i said i fed her a db roach and i've done that a couple of times now but very periodically like not not any time close to one another because that's not the food that they eat but it they will take advantage of that opportunity if they have the chance so that is why she has eaten doobie roaches before. Plus, she was pretty hungry just because I hadn't fed her that day. And I try not to let that happen. But it does happen periodically. It's not really a big deal. Sometimes I just need a day to cut up the new food that I'll store for, you know, the next couple of days. So that's what happened there. And it tends not to happen super often. But she's doing very well in her massive tank. And she is pretty food aggressive in the way that she comes right down when she knows I'm not going to put food in the enclosure. Generally in the morning, she'll be waiting down there for her food. 
So that's pretty cool too, because she knows that me coming in, coming in to give her food, she is right down there waiting for it. So we have kind of a bond in that way. So if you happen to enjoy this video for whatever reason, feel free to like it down below. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then just put it down in the comments below. I'll read it and I will respond. And then if you want more content, then subscribing is a good way to go. And there's a notification thing because I guess, I don't know, notifications are a thing. If you like notifications, ring the bell because there's a bell and then it will notify you. So have a fantastic day.